We're going to talk about the problems around here in the New York City area with Geraldo, who's got some boat damage um, in a moment. But first, let's talk a little bit about Olivia. Okay. So much more uh, information out. New cable showed that the militia charged with protecting the consulate. Apparently, uh, cable showed that they, it was likely infiltrated with Islamists. We couldn't trust them. Also, apparently, the State Department uh, declined to send this rapid response team. Uh, which has been sent in the past to help uh, on the coal and investigations and stuff like that. They could have actually gotten in sooner than the FBI did. It, it took them 24 days. And finally, uh, we were telling folks yesterday about the emergency meeting they had just about three weeks before September the 11th, 2012, where the, the consulate people said, mm, we really can't protect ourselves. There are all of these training grounds here. We are screwed. That's a mouthful. And I just have to say that for us to be probing this three or four days before the election guarantees that reasonable prudence will not be exercised because of the... But, Geraldo, Fox News has been looking hyper, at this for over a month. Okay, let me... Um, please, I'm, I didn't come to argue. Okay. I, I just want to... But it's make, frustrating. Let me make three... Make, let me, I think that this is a scam. Remember, I named, I named it Benghazi Gate. You did. Why did I name it Benghazi Gate? the obvious reference to Watergate and the cover-up. There are three aspects to this story. One is the situation that existed prior to September 11th, the security at the compound in Benghazi, why the hell we were there, why it wasn't more yeah. adequately secured, why there were no Marines there, why the ambassador was there at all, given the exigent circumstance that you described. That's part one of the thing. Part three of the thing is what happened after the tragedy uh, in terms of sending Ambassador Susan Rice to the United Nations, uh, having her suggest that it was all about a vile anti-Muslim video and all the rest of it. I think that both one and three deserve real intense scrutiny, and I think the Obama administration is susceptible righteously to legitimate criticism, particularly if the investigation turns up what we expect it to. No security. They should have known. They didn't know. They should have responded. They didn't respond. Uh, and then after the fact, they should have known. They should have responded. Right. Uh, you know, they should have been more clear in terms of describing what had happened. Now it comes to the actual military response itself. And that's where I take umbrage uh, with what has been said. I have spoken extensively with the uh, four-star general Jack Keane, the former vice chairman of the United States Army, uh, our premier military analyst. I am convinced that the military did whatever it could have done under the circumstances. I am similarly convinced that the State Department and the CIA also did, once the attack happened, everything they could. That's where I really, really uh, am extremely upset about the tone of the conversation. What happened? You had the attack on the consulate. The ambassador surrounded he and Stephen Smith in the, uh, in the safe room, suffocated to death by diesel fumes. The initial attack happens. There is sound and fury and fatalities, and now we've lost two people. Okay, the attack dies down. Everyone in Washington, everyone in Eurocom, AFRICOM, everybody now believes that the worst is over. That's why there's not, it, it's not, uh, to use a seven hour clock is wrong. Now the attack is over and says, oh, okay, the attack is over. Now we send our brave guys or our brave CIA guys, now uh, Tyrone Woods and, uh, and uh, uh, Glenn Dougherty uh, and the other, and their three colleagues, and they're joined by Libyan, loyal Libyan militiamen. They go to, from the annex, the CIA annex to the compound. They rescue the people. They bring them back. They're fighting, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, sporadic fighting from the, a compound to the annex. Now they're in, now they're back in the annex. And aside from some odd, you know, low caliber fighting, everyone thinks the worst is over. Now they're calling for help. Help is coming from Libya. I mean, from Tripoli, the capital. It lands at the airport. And no one knows. Everything that. Well, no it, one it. knows. Seven no. hours. So, so Washington, Wait, the State Department, the CIA does nothing, sends no help. They have it that on drones. That is an obscene lie. That no, is that it's not an lie, absolute Geraldo. misrepresentation. They still haven't you shown are, You are a politician uh, Geraldo, looking to make a political no, point. Absolutely you are, wrong. What force Where would was have the been sent? Where what was the force would have been? With the United they, States, we had assets at the, the United the, States the, military the is not a Geraldo. fire department. They're not a SWAT team. We had They're assets not sitting around in with their Tripoli, backpacks Geraldo. on waiting to respond. True or not, there were assets in Tripoli that could have helped. The assets from Tripoli were sent to Benghazi. Eric. Where were they? they were, the, who they do you think arrived at the annex to take those people to the airport? That's not we had, true. We had, you we are had, misleading the American people because Navy you want to make a political point. In the point. area. We had drones that could have been there. We had We have never could have in the history of this republic mounted a raid on the circumstance described here ever. 
We have never done it. The, the Israelis, when they rescued their people in Entebbe, it took them seven days to mount that operation. This was seven hours. So they knew. And when you protect, they knew. Boy, let they me say knew. something. I want to say knew, something else. Why did they blame a video two say, weeks I later say at the UN? I want to say something else. When I heard, and I interviewed this father of Tyrone Woods, when I heard Charles Woods call the President of the United States a murderer and a liar, I, it broke my heart. How many parents of GIs lost in conflicts that were, were screwed up have said of the President of the United States that he murdered my child? I love Charles Woods. I kissed him on television. But he is being led down the primrose path by misinformation that is making it look as if the President of the United States went gambling Harald. in Las Vegas when he could have been saving our people in Benghazi. And that's a lie. Harald, Harald, how do you separate, though, the difference between the State Department's reaction and the information that they had before? But that, that Gretchen, goes back to what I said. The legitimate area for criticizing the Obama administration is why in the world did we have our ambassador there in Benghazi when we could not protect him. That's a legitimate area of investigation, and I think that therein lies a vulnerability for them to explain. Right. Similarly, right. did they cover up, right. uh, you know, the nature of the genesis of that attack after the fact? Another right. legitimate I, I area of investigation. Upset about those but to blame the United States military for not responding under these circumstances, no, no, no. I take severe I'm separating the that. military from the State Department. But we are not. The, the military needs orders. Yes, yes, we, I am. The military needs orders from somebody in order to go. We, we, ultimately, we can see the great frustra frustration here on this set because people want answers. Here's, I, I here's love a, you Harold, guys. I absolutely. Harold, here's the thing. After we got bin Laden, within a couple of days, all the details of that secret mission, secret mission, on the front pages of all the papers, we just want some answers. We want and we, answers. And we've right. been waiting for close to but, eight but weeks. But when I hear coming. people with no combat okay. experience suggest all that, right. oh my all goodness, right. we saw it in real time, it, it makes it sound like we have bureaucrats we scratching their belly all and right. watching our people die, right. and that's not what happened. We get the frustration. There was no Snoopy AC-130 uh, gunship Arola. waiting on the strip in we, Italy. We get to where you're coming from. The bed. Coming up on Fox and Friends, one I'm state sorry, ready to I, I, I'm sorry, it's very frustrating. One state ready to